So I have some constraints already set up on here. And you, as you can see, these are the ones where they're fixed down to the chassis on the back. We're now going to apply some loads on the front, which will simulate, say, the snowmobile going and hitting into a tree or something like that. So let's go and apply a force. And I'm going to put it onto these two surfaces here. We're going to be going in the negative Z direction that you can see up there, so minus 10,000. And that's all there is to it. Let's start the simulation. And this is the amazing part about um, live simulates. You can see that the results are there almost instantaneously. At the moment, we're currently looking at deformation. If we want to, we can go and animate that, and we can actually change the deformation magnitude as it's actually animating there. Let's just go and stop that. And some of the other things that we can look at, it. this is quite interesting because if I go and zoom in here, you can see that we've got a deformation of 0.12 millimeters. So we might think that that's a pretty good design, but in reality, if we go and look at the Max von Mises stress here, and we go and take a look at those results there, we can see that we've got 294 megapascals, and actually the limit for aluminium is somewhere around 260. So we have got a problem. We're going to get, start to get some fatigue here pretty quickly, and we're going to start to get some fractures in that area. So this is where it's really neat. We can go back into the Creo modeling environment now. Because this is running on the graphics card, it doesn't interfere with the performance of the Creo environment. So if I want to go and make some changes on this, I can go ahead and do this. Now, you can design some design intents into your model and you can get some intelligence into your designs so that you get predictable changes and so we've now got an updated design we can just go and feed that back into the actual geometry and if we go and look at the solver now we can see that that 294 megapascals that we had before has now gone and dropped to something around 88. So it's that live ability to go and interact with the model and get instant feedback. That's the important thing about it. So that was a dimensional change. If I just go and make a dynamic change rather than a dimensional change, you can see we can just go and drag this up into a new location. Just go and feed those changes through. And you can see, once again, we've gone from 88 down to 73 megapascals there. And that's the beauty of this. It's that instant feedback. Because the way you tend to work as an engineer is you tend to think empirically. You think, what have I done before that's worked? And so you go and make changes in the way that you think is going to work. But are they necessarily the, going to give you the best results? And this is like having a little wise owl sitting on your shoulder just saying, yeah, what you've done is a, is a good design and good engineering change.